Hey guys, happy Monday. It's um the 28th. Jesus, man, I say this every Monday, but how is it the end of June? What is happening in life right now? Like fastest year ever. I cannot be the only one that feels this way. It's either that I'm just getting old and every year goes faster or it really is going really fast, like really fast. Um, good morning, guys. It's uh, 4 a.m. here in uh, Arizona. It, like, I don't know if y'all know this, but we're the only, well, I don't know, maybe we're not the only area, but the only state that I know of that literally we never change times. So like when daylight savings time comes, I don't change times <laughs> ever. Um, so it's sometimes four o'clock for me, this Zoom is, and then sometimes it's five o'clock. And let me tell you what, that hour makes the hugest difference ever. Um, Cause four o'clock, it's still dark out. Five, at least the sun is starting to look like at least come up a little. <laughs> so it doesn't seem as early, but it's so crazy when it's pitch black and I feel like it's still in the middle. Of, like, I feel like I'm doing it in the middle of a night Zoom. I kind of am. It's 4 a.m. Like, <laughs> this isn't normal. Um, how are you guys? How was your weekend? I hope you guys had an awesome, awesome weekend like I did. I actually did. Um, went and helped out with a, a living room local. It was a backyard local. If you guys have never done one of those, you must. I'll share it with you in a little bit. Um, if you're new with us this morning, please let me know in the chat. Are you new? Like, is this your first morning ever joining us? Like, you saw the link, you thought, you know what, I'm gonna check it out. I, you know what, we're happy you're here. Um, I, I looked through the chat and not the chat, but the participants and it looks like a lot of familiar faces, but there's some new names um, that I am not recognizing as much. So I think we do have some newer people on. Um, so if you are new, if you're not new, you probably already started this uh, daily routine that we've got y'all doing. But if you're new, this um, time in the Zoom is where we do our gratitude. And um, Cassidy, I know, right? Thank God for recordings, uh, especially for me, because I do not get up every morning at 4 a.m. <laughs> so uh, there's many Wednesdays and Fridays that I miss the Zoom when I'm not doing it. And I'm so happy for the recordings. Um, but I will tell you that this is the this is the part, if you are new, where we do our gratitude and um, grab our gratitude journals and we write down five to seven things over the last um, 24 to 48 hours that we are grateful for and um, dig deep with those things. I know that uh, I am so grateful for the fact that I got to actually spend some time with some thrivers this weekend. Anytime, I'll tell you what, anytime you guys are in a funk, just get around a bunch of other thrivers and suddenly the funk goes away. <laughs> it truly does. We are a lot of happy people. Um, and it was such a good group that I was around Saturday. So it was like definitely on my to-do grateful list today. Um, so write down those five, seven things. And like I always tell you guys, it does not matter if you have a gratitude journal or not. Don't make that your excuse for not doing it use a piece of paper, a notebook, grab something, but every morning get in the routine of doing it because it's super hard to start your day out really crappy when you started out with gratitude. And um, it's kind of hard to go through your day <laughs> crappy when you started out so amazing. And one of my fun, one of my fun things that I like to do with my gratitude journals, since I've been doing it now for almost four years, I've been doing gratitude every single morning. And one of my things I like to do is every um, January, I like to look through and it's kind of cool to see. It's kind of like a record of events. <laughs> I'm like, oh yeah, I did that. Um, because if you're digging deep, if you're not just writing down the same things every day, um, the obvious things, but if you're actually thinking about different things that you're doing in your life at the time that you're grateful for, it's kind of a little journal of um, a, a sequence of events. So it's kind of cool to look back and see the different things that you did throughout the year um, that you were so grateful that you got to do. So hopefully you guys have all started your morning out that way. Um, and if you want, I always love watching you guys share something that you're grateful for in the chat with us today. 
Um, if you feel like sharing, share it with us, but let us know something you are grateful for over the last 24 hours. Um, share the love. We want to know what's going on with your life. Uh, so you guys, who, who got chill? Who got some chill? Yeah, like, first of all, <laughs> I'm so excited about this product. I can't stand it. Um, I think I'm the most excited and I know we can't go like advertising, you know, anxiety and depression and all that, but from what Jason Camper said, you know, behind the scenes, you know, not putting this out there publicly, but huge for anxiety. And I looked up the ingredients in it and I am so excited because I'm always looking for natural things and different things to help with my anxiety. I suffered from how many of you guys in the chat have suffered from anxiety or panic attacks? I have suffered. I remember my first panic attack when I was five years old, five years old. I remember going in my mom's bedroom in the middle of the night and telling her that I could hear my heart beating in my chest. And I thought I was going to die. Um, I remember the first one I was like around five and Ever since then, I mean, I have huge panic and anxiety issues, so much so that about seven, eight years ago, I racked up some crazy emergency room bills. I mean, I was constantly like sure I was having a heart attack. <laughs> like, I'm definitely having a heart attack. It is happening right now. I would go to the emergency room. And by the time I get there, most of my symptoms were gone. Um, but since then... Um, because really I've suffered, my adult life has been kind of a series of ups and downs with it. Um, you know, some I'll have good months and then sometimes it's like all month long and y'all know that have this, that it's debilitating sometimes. I mean, I have suffered from literal, um, social anxiety. I've had that a lot and, and you never know when it's really going to strike, but to people that never have had panic and anxiety issues, they kind of don't get it. Um, they kind of don't understand what you're going through, but if you've had it, oh my gosh, you know, and you know, it's not a fun place to be. Um, your mind is a very powerful thing. And, and that is one thing like through this business and self-development and everything else, the one thing that pops up in self-development. And when we talk about it all the time in this business, I tell you guys, this business is 99% mindset your mind is so powerful and you actually control, you know what I mean? Your feelings a lot of the time. And sometimes we're not in control of our feelings. And so what I've learned over the past really eight years is how to get in control of those feelings when I have those feelings of panic and anxiety. So I've learned a lot of different techniques and natural things to do, but I'm, there's just sometimes where even through, even though I know, you know, I, this is something I've suffered with. I know how to deal with it. There are still those days where it's so bad that I am like, man, I wish I was still on Zoloft. Um, you know, I wish I was still taking something for it. And so I am always looking for natural ways to those really, really, really bad panic or anxiety attacks. So I cannot wait. Did anybody actually get there yet? I know that's probably a no. But hey, you know, shipping can be fast sometimes. <laughs> so I mean, I'm waiting for the first person to get it because I need to know what is this stuff? What does it taste like? How quickly does it work? I, like, I cannot wait to see and hear results for this because I will tell you what, I'm about to go make another million dollars just on this product because I'm in like 18 different anxiety and panic attack groups. And I know so many people personally who haven't even been interested in Thrive before, but I know would be interested in this big time if it truly helps with that type of issue. So I'm excited. I am stoked and um, I can't wait for all of us to be able to try it and share our results and share our testimonies on it because I think it's going to be huge, absolutely huge. So we're coming up on the end of the month and I wanted to just remind everybody it's the 28th you are going to want to make sure that you're looking at your waiting room y'all know what your waiting room is is there anybody in here that does not it, it, you're like what's a waiting room 
<laughs> I hope everybody knows what their waiting room is. But the waiting room is when you sign up people, you have the opportunity to move those people within 60 days underneath other people. And so I always like to give a couple tips on that because we are coming up on the end of the month. It's time that you want to be looking at your waiting room. And of course, if you don't really have anything under you, then that wouldn't be a worry right now. But if you're starting to actually build a team and you're signing quite a few people, that's when you really want to start paying attention every month. Um, usually on the 28th is when I do it. Um, and I really take a look and go, okay, what's in my waiting room? Do I want to move anything? Um, what do I want to do with it? And that was one of the selling points when I chose Thrive, when I chose Lavelle as the company I was coming to is I had never heard of another network marketing company that had a waiting room. Like every other network marketing company, you either have no say on where things go, they just go where they fall. Or if you are in a unilevel hybrid compensation plan, like we have at Lavelle, like my last company was the same, we had 24 hours. You, you had 24 hours to move a person. Well, you don't know what somebody's going to do in 24 hours. You know, everybody signs up and says they're going to be a rock star, or you think somebody's going to be great, and then they don't do anything. Or then there's that person that says, I'm not going to do anything. And then all of a sudden they take off. So what I love about the Lavelle compensation plan is you have 60 days to make that decision on where you can place somebody, why you would place them there, um, things of that nature. And you know, there's lots of different strategy with the waiting room. I think every leader may teach it a little bit different. So that's why you have uplines, guys. Get with your upline and say, okay, it's the 28th. I've got some things. Should I move anything? What's your thoughts? And we're not your bosses. Like nobody's going to tell you what you have to do. We're going to tell you what we would do, give you some choices. And at the end of the day, it's ultimately your decision on you know, if you are wanting to help someone at that time, or if you're thinking you need to move someone, but I do always like to give this tip. If you've signed somebody up, let's say at the beginning of the month and they have done nothing, you, they're not even getting back to you, but they purchased maybe a 200 or $400 kit. I move those people pretty quickly because that volume isn't going to be here next month. And if that new promoter decides to do absolutely nothing after this, then that money is just going to go to waste, right? It just would have been wasted. So what I like to do is I like to um, move those people and I like to figure out who underneath me could promote with an extra $400. Maybe I have somebody close to 12K and all they need is a little bit more money or close to 4K or, you know, or somebody that it could help, um, you know, one of their people. So Take a look at that because there's so many times that we could have helped somebody on our team. And, um, you know, when it comes to that, when it comes to a promoter, if I sign somebody and then they end up kind of, you know, I guess I'm not going to do this or they seem to be flaking out, um, I'll place that stuff even deep, you know, if I know it's going to help somebody in a deeper level because I want to be able to help people promote if I can. So talk it over with your, um, with your upline. You know, and, and like I said, when you're just getting started, you don't even need to worry, worry about things like waiting rooms. That's, you know what, your first 30 to 60 days, don't worry about waiting rooms. Unless you're enrolling like a crazy person, don't worry about that. The only thing you need to be worrying about is get your two customers so you can thrive for free by the end of the month. And that's the second thing I wanted to touch base on really quick too, with Lavelle News. Um, I wanted to remind you guys that you know, the second of every month, we get that free product credit put in. A lot of you have customers under you right now, or people that have never thrived before that signed up with free accounts or, or promoters. Get with every single one of those people and remind them in just five days, your account can be loaded with money to get free product. Let's try to find those people. And it's amazing how somebody once it's only a couple days left for them to do it, they run and go push themselves and do it versus if you tell somebody at the beginning of the month or mention it, it's kind of not a priority. But once it becomes a priority, they kind of go, okay, yeah, I want to do that. Yes, I want, I, I need to get my product free. And there's a lot of you guys that, you know, you may assign customers that maybe got discounts and now they're like, I don't know if I can afford next month. Okay, well, let's get somebody ordering because even 50 bucks, 
off, right? Even if they can put $50 towards their order, because what Lavelle does is they take the difference of the two orders. So if both people ordered $50, you would get 50 bucks, right? So even if it's a, a smaller product, it would still be a discount on the products coming in. So just wanted to throw that out there and um, remind you guys of that. And also one last little tip on that. Remember that you guys, it's not your customer's jobs. Like, dude, your customers would have signed up promoters if they were actually wanted to work the business. And when you tell them, oh, just go find two people, they're probably not going to do that because they need help. They need guidance. They need support. They need somebody to kind of do it for them almost. And what I mean by that is tell them, look, I know you don't maybe know what to say or how to do it, but a couple of ways to do that is have them make a post in Facebook, wearing their DFT, put, pointing at it, saying something awesome about the product and tag you in that post. Um, and if anybody comments, those are some people that they can put you in a message with. And you can also say, who do you know that you think needs to feel the way you've been feeling? Get me in a message with them and I'll do the rest. You know, let me introduce this to them. Let's see if we can, you know, get them on board or seeing if they want a sample and start preparing because two days left in the month. I mean, there's a lot of people that I'm sure want to thrive for free, but back to my original don't worry about these, like all the stuff, right? There's so much stuff that you could worry about. But when you're new in that first 30 to 60 days, what you need to be worrying about is two customers, right? We want to make sure you're thriving for free. We want to make sure you're running your business for free. We want to make sure that you're not putting any money into Lavelle at all if you don't have it. And then that next step is two promoters, right? If you're still for in your, those first two weeks, two people that want to do this with you, let's get you to VIP 800 and get you your Tuesday paycheck next week can be $660 cash incentives and bonuses, right? So don't worry about the A, B, C, and D because that's what a lot of people do. You know, they come in and they wanna know everything A to Z when they just need to know A, right? Because we can't even get to B unless A is done, right? We can't thrive for free if we don't find those two customers. And if we never sign a promoter, we can't start building a team. So we can't really move on to the rest of the steps, you know, where to go from there. And, and none of that matters until we kind of get past step A. And some of you guys might be in step A and you've been in the business for, you know, a year. That's okay. There's so many people that are on here that are still at step A. They're still trying to find their first customers and promoters. Um, they came in with no network. They're learning, they're growing, they're kind of, you know, plugging in and, and they're building a network right now. They're gaining trust and support, but they just haven't found those right people wanting to sign with them yet. And that's okay. And that's super common, but don't worry about all of the other things because you don't need to know all those other things yet, right? You're going to learn as you go. Somebody told me that a long time ago when I started in this industry, they said, Lisa, do not overcomplicate this. Don't reinvent the wheel. And whatever you do, don't think you need to know all the things. You will learn every step as you do every step. Every time something happens new in your business, that's how you're going to learn it. And you're going to learn it by practice and you're going to learn it by consistency. So just remember those things. Um, so today, so today I, I really, 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 really wanted to touch on um, leadership. Like, here's my thing. That's what this business is about. This business is about, and I think it's why teachers do so well in network marketing. Like teachers are the bomb at this business. Um, we have a lot of teachers on our team that do super well in this business that were teachers or are still teachers, but they do so well because they are, they, they totally get and understand that it's a learning experience, that it's about, you know, caring about other people, but it's about learning. It's about learning and growing and helping others, right? Helping others do that same thing. Um, so I wanted to talk today about leadership and how to start becoming a leader, because whether you have one person on your team right now, you are a leader. You're, you're a leader to somebody. And even if you have no one on your team right now, if you want to be a leader, right? Because I'm a firm believer that you will never 
get to the level that you're supposed to be at until you're supposed to be there, right? I believe that until your mind is in the place and the shape that it needs to be, to be at that level, to take care of those people, to to bring that kind of income in, you won't get there until you've shaped your mind and, and until you've grown into the leader that you need to be for that place. So I want to talk a little bit about that today. And I am going to tell you what, there is a book, it's called Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You, Sometimes you Learn by John C. Maxwell. Um, it's Life's Greatest Lessons Are Gamed From Our Losses. But anyways, this book is a book that I have had. Um, if I screenshotted it right now and sent it to you, you guys would be like, oh my God, because it looks so old because I have had it for literally, I've been in network marketing 11 years. I think I've had it nine and everything is underlined and highlighted because I refer back to this book so many times. But in case you guys are wondering um, where I'm getting a lot of today's information that I'm going to be sharing with you and what I've lived by um, is this book. Um, and it's so good. Again, it's called Sometimes You Win, Sometimes You Learn um, by John C. Maxwell. And basically, I want to take you guys into some steps and, you know, how to learn how to become a better person and in turn becoming a leader, a leader that people are going to want to follow, um, somebody that people are going to want to join in a business like this. So here's the, here's the first place I want to start at. I think most of us don't expect to, I don't know, achieve perfection at things. <laughs> I don't. <laughs> I mean, I know I always say it. I'm always learning. I'm always growing. I'm like, you know, I, I'm learning every day. I'm not an expert at anything. And anybody that thinks they're an expert at anything, then you, you need, you haven't done any self-development because we're always learning. We're always growing. We, we don't know it all. But I think we do want to be our best, right? I do. Like, I'm not trying to be perfect, but I want to be the best that I can be. And that's going to require improvement. And I think what happens is, is when we make a mistake or fail, when we make a mistake or fail, we do one of these four things. We blow up. We react, we, we're going to react with like anger, resentment, blame. We, we're going to rationalize it. You know, we, we, we blow up, right? We cover up. We try to hide or we try to hide a mistake, protect our image, ourselves. Um, a person who makes mistakes and then offers an excuse for it has made two mistakes. Remember that. A person that's made mistakes and then offers an excuse has made, just made two mistakes. Um, the third thing we do when we mistake or fail is we back up. We withdraw. We begin to tell ourselves, you know, that, that it's not our fault, <laughs> you know, we, we back up, we blow up, we cover up, we back up. And the last one is we give up. We throw our hands up in the air, we quit. We never address the mistake in a healthy way, ever, ever, ever. I think it's important to talk about that because one thing that I've learned, one of the first things I learned about leadership is that you have to own your mistakes. That was the first thing I had to learn as a leader. You have to own your mistakes. Don't blow up when you make a mistake. Don't cover up your mistakes. Don't back up and don't give up. What do you do from mistakes? What do leaders do from mistakes? They assess it, they learn, they take ownership, and then they grow, it, grow from there. Then they try again. Then they do it differently. Then they tweak some things. And then they may fail again, make a mistake, right? <laughs> but they do the same thing. If you, every time you make a mistake or you fail and you blow up, cover up, back up, or give up, you do any of those things, you're not ready to go to that next level. So that's the first place I wanted to talk about because I think it's so important. It's the first lesson I learned in leadership was own your mistakes, face your failures, and then and never give up on those failures, but think about what do I need to do? Analyze, assess, and get better. And you know what? Your team needs to know that you're failing. 
Your team needs to know, guess what? I didn't do what I was supposed to do. Guess what? My PPA sucks sometimes. I'm, don't you all feel better when I get on here and tell you my PPA is one? Let's be honest. It's not because you're, you think you're waiting for me to fail. No, it makes you feel human. It makes you go, okay, if Lisa's at this place and she's done all these things, but this month her PPA is only one, which it is right now, then that must make me okay too, right? It kind of almost validates. So remember that your team doesn't need to think that you do everything perfectly. Your team doesn't need to think that you're always on fire. Your team doesn't need to think that your life is perfect. Your team doesn't need to need to think that you're perfect because none of those things are true. And, you know, with social media today, it's the worst ever because I always talk about, you know, on our team, what's one of the first things we do. We highlight all the people on our team doing amazing, crazy things. But the thing is, is that's not realistic because only 0.01% of the people that come in are going to go 12K in the first year, 0.01%. Yet those are the people that we're highlighting, right? So it makes 99.999% of people feel like they're not doing the right thing. And that's just not the case. Be realistic with people. Okay, so step one. Okay, let's jump into this. Step one, improving yourself is the first step to improving leadership and everything else. That's step one. Um, I mean, how many people get frustrated? How many of you are frustrated or you have been frustrated because your business or your personal life has plateaued? It's going in the wrong direction. It, it, you know, it seems to be stagnant or it's not growing at all. You want to know why that's happening? Because you're more concerned about personal success than you are about personal growth. That's what's getting in the way, you guys. Success doesn't always bring growth, but personal growth will always, always add to your success. Does that make sense? Success does not always bring growth, right? It doesn't mean anything. I, I have 200 Ks on this team that you could talk to in this company on this team that I've known that people will tell you it's the worst leadership I've ever had in my life. Success does not always bring growth, but growth will always add to your success. The highest reward is not what we get for it, but what we become by it. The most important question is not what am I getting, but what am I becoming? The most important question is not what am I getting, but what am I becoming? It's the capacity to develop and improve and distinguish leaders from followers. That's what distinguishes leaders from followers. The same capacity is also what separates successful people from unsuccessful ones. And the ability is honestly becoming more important every single day of your business. The bottom line is clear. If you're not moving forward, the world's going to pass you guys by. If you want to improve your life, your family, your work, your economic status, your influence, or anything else, you need to first improve yourself. What do we get? What do we talk about the most? Self development. You cannot get to the next place. You can't be a good leader without it. You can't ever achieve anything in this life without developing yourself. Most roadblocks, I mean, let's let's face it most roadblocks in life that you have anything you name it i want to work on my marriage i want to lose weight i want to exercise more the th the thing is is that when you really get to the core of the reason those things are failing it's because you are not developing your mindset so number 1 write that down improving yourself is the first step to improving leadership and everything else really in your whole life the second thing is improvement requires us to move out of our comfort zone. We talk about that all the time. So improvement in our leadership requires us to move out of our comfort zone. Taking a new step, uh, saying a new word, instead of people, you know, most people fear the opposite, not taking the step. Why? Because if we don't step forward out of our comfort zone, and into the unknown, 
we will not improve and grow. Security does not take us for granted. It does not help us to overcome obstacles, you guys. It does not lead you to progress. You'll never get anywhere interesting in this life if you always, always do the safe thing. You've got to, got to, got to, got to, got to surrender security to improve. What does it take to get us to move out of our comfort zone and, and into the unknown? right? This is the second thing we talk about all the time. Who wants to follow somebody that always plays it safe? Who wants to pop follow somebody that never, ever, ever, ever does anything different? Who wants to follow someone that refuses to step out of their comfort zone? Nobody. You got to start basically, I mean, let's think about it. We need to, we've got to fail quickly so that we can get out of our own way. If we don't, if, if we're not failing or making mistakes, it means we're playing it too safe. When is the last time you failed? When's the last time your heart was racing and beating because you were about to do something that scared the crap out of you? I, I just had this happen Saturday when I went to do that local. It has been a year since I have stood up and talked in front of people and there was only like 20 people there. But let me tell you what, I was all like cotton mouth. My mom was like, oh shit, do I remember what to say? It's been like a year. Like it was COVID and like, I haven't had to do this type of thing. I mean, I've been at, I've been to like, you know, like little retreats and, but those are like, we're all sitting in a circle, but this was people I did not know that were not in Lavelle that I had to talk to and, you know, give a spiel to. And man, I'll tell you what, my heart was racing. And I was like this, and I left that, I left Saturday night and I was like, I'm on fire. I'm about to go sign a customer. Like I just felt good about myself because when you push the envelope, when you step outside of your comfort zone, when you don't play it safe, that's where the magic happens. Mistakes aren't failures. You guys, they are proof they, that we're all making an effort. When you guys understand that, you're going to easily move out of your comfort zone. Try something new, improve. You guys, you know what? We all, we all, not you guys, we all, we all have to stop overcoming a life controlled by our feelings. Everything is controlled by feelings, isn't it? We got to push through. If we want to succeed in getting out of our comfort zone, so that we can improve, we need to follow examples, the examples of other people. Improvements demand a commitment to grow long after the mood in which it was made has passed. I want you guys to write that down. Improvement demands a commitment to grow long after the mood in which it was made has passed. Do you guys understand what that means? It means that Things are going to get old. You're going to wake up some days and want to not message anyone. It's not going to be as fun as it was in the beginning. You're going to have days where you'd rather do anything but talk about Thrive, right? Improvement demands a commitment to grow long after the mood in which it was made has passed. It long, long after you've lost that spark and fire that you need to feel the, the burning in your body. I talk about this all the time. I always compare it to a relationship when you get, you know, when you meet someone new and, and you get that feeling in your tummy and you can't wait to see them again and everything they do. And you talk on the phone for like 10 hours a day. And then, you know, you get together and three, five years later, 10 years later, it, it's not the same feeling, right? A marriage or relationship, you've got to work on that every single day. You're going to have to work on stepping out of your comfort zone every single day, pushing yourself. The most common trait that I know I've found in successful people over the last 11 years is that they conquered the temptation to give up. Because we're all going to get to that place. We're all going to feel that temptation to just give up because giving up is easy. Giving up is what everyone does. Why do you think that by January 30th, literally 85% of people that set New Year's resolution have already given up? It's what people do. Get out of your comfort zone. 
try new things. This is important and it's part of leadership. It's part of growing into leadership. All right, the third thing is improvement is not satisfied with quick fixes. Improvement is not satisfied with quick with quick fix with quick fixes. You know, we live in a society with destination disease. Too many people want to do enough to arrive. They too many people want to do enough to arrive and then they want to retire. They just want to do enough, a little, tiny bit, just just enough to get there. That's what's wrong is you're never going to be a 200K if you just want to do enough, right? Have you guys ever seen the 54321? 54321. You all know what that is. Mario Dillard puts it out there. People teach it, you know, five, five new contacts, but four new, three, three ways. Okay. Five, four, three, two, one. Guess what, guys? If you're only going to do five, four, three, two, one, you're doing just enough. And the reason why people never grow into leadership is because they just want to do just enough. They want to be able to say, I did it. But really, what did they do? You have to be willing to do way more than enough. Way more than enough. Losers don't lose because they focus on losing. They lose because they focus on just getting by. Losers lose. Losers, nobody goes into anything. Nobody goes into anything thinking, man, I want to lose. Man, I don't want to win. Man, I hope this just fails. But the thing is, is they're already setting themselves up for failure because they have done nothing to prepare and they're not willing to go the extra mile. Losers lose because they focus on just getting by. Stop focusing on just getting by and focus on being great, you guys. Improvement doesn't come to people who fixate on quick fixes. It comes to the, to the slow but steady people who keep working at getting better and better and better. If you guys have a quick fix mindset, then you need to shift it to continuous improvement. Stop thinking about the quick fix and think about, I'm always improving, I'm getting better, I'm always learning, I'm always growing. There's, did you guys hear when I say always? I don't say there's an out. I don't say there's an end. I don't say there's a there's a quit button. I say I'm always learning. I'm always growing. I'm always improving. I don't say I'm always growing, but then I'll quit if I stop growing or if I don't want to grow anymore. Like there is no quit. There is no out. There's no easy button. Except the fact that improvement is never ending. It's a never ending battle. The key to success is following the impulse to soar more than the desire to wallow. It's a never ending struggle. We all know that. At least it has been for me. <laughs> I, I've been doing this for 11 years. I know you guys probably get sick of me here saying it's almost 12. I'm going to change that word 12. I can't believe how long I've been doing this. And I can tell you that it's been a never ending struggle. I, I think any successful person would be pretty honest in saying that they got to the top the hard way fighting their own laziness and ignorance every step of the way. I do. I have to fight every day. You know how easy it is. Let me tell you what. Y'all think you get 200K and, and, you know, all the answers are there and everything gets easier. But let me tell you what. You know what happens when you get 200K? You know what happens when you don't have to work a normal job any money anymore and a paycheck comes every week, gets bigger than you've ever seen? People get lazy. I've watched it happen over and over and over and over again. They get complacent. They get used to it. And do you know what happens? They have to, you have to fight that. I could lay in bed, you guys, every day this year, watch Netflix, travel around with my kids, never open my cloud office. And do you guys know every single Tuesday I'm going to get a check for $10,000? Because I've built up. For the last, you know, four and a half years in Lavelle, I've worked every day. And if I just wanted to do that and stop, I could. I have to fight that urge every day. But do you know how I, how I fight that? I think about the hundreds of thousands of people on this team whose, whose goals and dreams haven't come true yet, who I need to help because I'm not satisfied till other people get, that's what, I, that's what fuels my fire. That's where, that's what gets me going every day. You have to fight your own laziness. <laughs> you really do. So don't think it gets easier. It gets harder. I have people that have soared to 200K and are no longer there anymore and have not held it in a very, very long time because that's what happened to them. They completely got lazy. 
it would be easy, but it's not because you have to, you have to find that thing that fuels your fire, that why. Something in human nature tends to make us want to find plateau and stay there where it's comfortable. Tell me that's not true. Tell me that there's something in each of us that we get to this place that's comfortable. That might be 12K for you. That might be 40. That might be. And all of a sudden, you're not doing the same things that you were doing to get, you know, you got to 12K, but then you can't get to 40. Why? Because the same things that it took you to get to 12K are the same exact things it's going to take you to get to 40. But if you really look in the mirror, you're going to say, wow, I, you know, I got kind of comfortable. That paycheck was all I kind of wanted. That was good enough. You know, my life's a little bit easier. And now suddenly I don't have the urge to message 20 people a day. And suddenly, I don't know, I don't feel like embarrassing myself and getting in someone's in inbox, asking them for a favor if they've ever tried Thrive. Like all of a sudden, the things we were willing to do to get to that comfortable place, now that we are comfortable, we could have so much more. Everyone on here, everyone in life could have so much more but they plateau because they stay where it's comfortable. They stay where it's comfortable. It's the lack of improvement. It's not wanting to improve. And that's what makes most people in this world mediocre. Why do you think only, you know, I think they said, you know, point, one percent or of the population makes over a hundred grand a year. I can't remember the number, but or how many millionaires there are in this world? Because most people get comfortable. They are not willing to do what it takes to get to where those people are. I made a post on Facebook, you know, last yesterday, and it talked about some people say you're lucky. No, there is nobody I know in this life. That, ha that literally is super successful. I'm not talking about they make money. I'm talking about super successful that did not work their butt off to be super successful. That weren't extraordinary. That weren't willing to go above and beyond and do what others weren't, weren't willing to do. I can be honest with you. I have friends in my life. They work out every day. They have these awesome bodies and I am mad. I can't even put a bikini on. I put 15 on, but I'm you know what? Here's the answer. I can make all the excuses in the world. And believe me, I do, y'all. I've made them all. I, I remember the other day I had to cut myself off making the excuses. I was talking about how fat I was and how uncomfortable I was in my own body and how none of my clothes fit. And do you know what I said? Well, you know, I travel all the time. And it's hard to stay on a diet and blah, 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 blah. No. The fact is, is I'm not willing to do what other people are. I'm not willing to put down the damn ice cream. I'm not willing to, when I travel, pick the things I should eat. Instead, I'm like, oh, that looks good on the menu. And so I get it. And I make the excuse that I'm traveling. The bottom line is, is that I wanted to do what I needed to do to get to where I am in Lavelle. I was willing to do whatever it took. That was, I was willing to do that because I wanted it so bad. I must not want to lose weight bad enough. And until I get to that place, or I may never get to that place. Right? Because there's some things in life that some people just won't be willing to do. You know, if you're going to begin your improvement journey, don't get discouraged. Your starting, your starting point doesn't matter, guys. Don't worry about that. Everyone who has gotten to where they are today started where they, where they are now. Right? Wherever you are now. Somebody was there and they got to that, you know, I was where everyone is. Some of, there's 200Ks in this company that has stories way worse than mine. And, and then mine is way worse than some others. And then there's some others that are, but guess what? They all started in a place of wherever you are too. And they all got there. So don't think, don't worry about your starting point. Everyone who's gotten to where they are started where they were, right? What matters is where you end up. And you get there by continuing to fight and improve and battle every day. Make this your guys' motto. Write this down. 
I'm not where I'm supposed to be. I'm not what I want to be. But I'm not what I used to be. I haven't learned how to arrive. I've just learned how to keep on going. Make that your motto. Say it every day because that, that is the key. Just keep going. Don't use the excuses. Don't use the, there's a million reasons why you're going to think of that you don't need to keep going or you can't do the live video or you can't speak in front of five people or you can't get on the Zoom tonight. I'm not where I was supposed to be. I'm not what I want to be, but I'm not what I used to be. I haven't learned how to, to, I have not, I haven't learned how to arrive. I've just learned how to keep on going. If you can live those words, you will eventually be successful. If you can live those words, not just say them, but live them, you can, you're going to eventually be successful. Accept the fact that improvement is a result of small steps, you guys. It's small steps every day, little things, the compound effect. There's a book called The Compound Effect. My favorite book, Darren Hardy, it's probably the second book I read when I got into network marketing. And it was one of the best books I ever read. And The Compound Effect talks about how the little things you're doing over time that you don't think are creating any results at all, all add up. and then suddenly boom there's the results so good get that book but anyways you know people today are looking for the secret to success they truly are you know how many times somebody will call me after a zoom and tell, say tell me what you're really doing or what do you know that we don't no i'm just doing what i what i'm telling you i just do it more and longer and and more consistently you know, they want magic a magic bullet an easy answer a single thing that will basically get them all the way to Z. They want to be at Z already. How do I get to fortune and fame right now? Success generally doesn't work that way, you guys. Success in, in most things comes not from gigantic strokes of fate, but from simple incremental progress every single day, little by little. It's boring, isn't it? It is. It's boring. It may not be exciting. It may not sound exciting, but it's the truth. Oh my gosh. I've been so bored sometimes over the last 11 years. Oh, not signing anybody for three, four months. And then finally you sign people and you're like, what is happening? I'm doing the same thing. This is boring. Like I want to see the fruits of my labor. Improvement is achieved in inches, not giant steps. You know, I'll never be able to achieve that. I used to, I, I used to say that all the time. Uh, there's no way I'd be a two. There's no way I'll be a two. Okay. There's no way. I remember looking at people on stage, talking my first year in this industry, and thinking, "There's no way I'll ever be up there." And I get super discouraged because I would think they know something I don't. They have something I don't. God, you know, I feel like I'm doing all the right things, and why am I not getting anywhere? Why did I become discouraged? Because I saw that giant gap between that person and me. It's so far away. The difference between where I was and where that person was appeared to be like, like the biggest mountain that I could ever climb. Like there's no way to get there. But what I didn't realize back then was that the progress these people had made and their gains and, and their wins and all the things that they had to do, it all came through small steps, small victories, little by little. Most people are really unaware of that secret. That's why they give up. It's really the secret to success. If you all want to know the secret, the, the magic bullet, the that one single answer I just told you. It's doing every day the things that you're supposed to do to grow your business without fail, even when nothing's happening, no matter what, having faith and knowing, and you will get there. When you look at and it is 
especially when you're making like too big of, you know, when you look at, oh, I'm just came in and I want to be 200K, that's way too far away. Nobody can grasp that. I don't think most people come into Lavelle thinking I'm going to be a millionaire someday. Like they, they're just trying to be a 12K or a 4K. You got to look at those little teeny steps. Why do, why do you think we teach what we teach in Lavelle? Why do you think we have this simple system? Because we want people to focus on just that. Two customers, two promoters, do it, repeat it, teach it. That's the only thing you need to know to get to the top of this company. Everything else is just white noise. Okay, the next thing. So you've got to set goals, right? You've got to set goals. Um, set goals with small steps. So don't come in and go, I, I wouldn't even come in and go, I need 4K. It, the first goal with the new promoter should be, let's get you two customers. Like we can't go to the next step until we get to the first step and there's small steps and we need to celebrate every single little win because all of those are going to add up the compound effect. Um, okay, number four, to, to be a better leader. Improvement is a daily commitment. You have to be committed to improve yourself every single freaking day. You know, if you guys study a subject every day for one hour a day, five days a week, in five years, you will become an expert at that area. Okay, did you hear that? If you study a subject every day for one hour a day. So let's apply this to your business. If you work your business every day for one hour a day, five days a week, in five years, you'll become an expert. Income producing activities. But this is anything. This is true. This is a study that basically um, Earl Nightingale published something. And it said he published something. And in this book, he said what changed his life was this little tidbit. If you study a subject every day for one hour a day, five days a week, in five years, you will become an expert at that area. Okay. I, yeah, I don't know about you guys. But there is not much in this life I've done every day, four or five days, one hour a day. I, I, there's not many things I can say I'm an expert at. I don't, anybody else on here? Like, that is why I'm constantly growing and learning as a leader, why I'm always picking up a book, why I'm always in podcasts, why I'm always like, what can I absorb? What can I learn today? What can I, how can I grow? And we're so on to the next thing and thinking something doesn't work that we're not spending enough time absorbing and learning that thing. So how can we ever become an expert at anything when we're just skipping to the next thing? We can't. Motivation may get you guys going, but the positive habits that you develop and practice constantly, continually, every single day, that's what's going to keep you improving. As I've worked to improve pretty much on a day-to-day -day basis since I started, literally, Two words that pretty much helped me stay on track. The first word is being intentional with my time, knowing that if I only have an hour a day when I started, when I was waiting tables, I had very little time. I had to have intention. Okay. Intention. Every morning as I start my day, I intend to learn something that day. This that's going to develop a mindset that's going to take you to that next level. And it's going to help you look for things that's going to help you improve yourself. The other word is contemplation. Time alone is an essential for improvement. Time alone is an essential for self-improvement. That's common sense. When I spend time thinking about my challenges, experiences, and all the things that I've learned over the last almost 12 years, I get to gain perspective on that. I can evaluate anything that's happened, right? I can evaluate what went wrong, my failures, the loss and gains, and I can learn from it all. Contemplation and time by yourself is going to give you time for positive self-talk, right? Because when we started today's Zoom, I told you guys, you have to get the right mindset. In order to get the right mindset to become a good leader, you have 
to understand that you have to talk positive to yourself, that you have to change the way you think and the way you're talking. The most important words we will ever utter are those words we say to ourselves, about ourselves. When we're by ourselves, when no one's listening, you know, it's during those conversations, you guys, that we can beat ourselves up and make ourselves feel really, really small, or we can learn ourselves up so that we can become better. How, which one sounds better? <laughs> I want to become better. I had, that was one of the hardest things for me is how are you going to use the law of attraction in your favor? If every day you're getting up in the morning and saying, I'm never going to win. I haven't signed a customer in five weeks. I, I'm never going to sign a customer. Why can't I sign a customer? That's all negative self-talk. The most important conversations you're ever going to have in this life are the conversations you have in yourself in your own head, what you're telling yourself, what you're saying. You have to believe first. There's no one that's going to follow you as a leader if you don't believe in yourself. If you guys want to spend some time each day to try to improve yourself, you might want to begin by asking yourself three questions at the end of the day. What? I don't know why. Um, oh, it started again. Um, that's one of the things I don't do is I will not, um, I, I don't, I don't compare myself to other people because that's only going to slow me down. And, and it's not my desire. My desire isn't to be better than anyone else. See, that's the thing. This isn't a race. You've got to stop looking at it that way. My desire is to be better than me. The day, the day before, the month before, the week before. That's how I know I'm growing as a human. You know, you've got to make Im improvements intentional. Anybody can do it, but you have to be intentional about it. You have to make a decision. Um, I could go on and on today so much. So next Monday, I'm going to talk about, you know, how to, how to basically make improvements. How do you make improvements intentional? Um, and, and we'll go from there. But, you know, I just want to end with this. I always try to remember that I'm a work in progress. And I try to maintain perspective. I try to look at things and go, okay, what am I doing? What am I not doing? I have those looks in the mirror that I tell you guys about on Zooms every week. I have those looks in the mirror, those, those talks with myself, those are real talks when no one else is looking or watching. I have those a lot with myself and I don't always like what I have to say because uh, I know, and so do you guys, you all do too. I know when I'm not putting my best foot forward. And even though I may make excuses to other people, and even though I may say this or tell myself things. I really know when I look deep inside what I'm not doing. I really truly know when I'm not doing what I need to be doing. I don't need to try to have all the answers and I don't need to try to learn everything in a day. When I make mistakes, I own them. It's not because I'm a failure or worthless, right? It's not, a, you're not failure. You're not worthless because you make mistakes either, right? You just didn't do something right. Because you need to improve on it. You need to work on it. You need to learn. You need to grow. And that is going to motivate you to keep growing and improving. You know, if, if I don't know something, it's an opportunity to try to improve in, in a new area. That's the way I look at it. I'm in this for the long haul. I'm not trying to be like anybody else. I'm not trying to compare myself to anyone else. All I'm trying to do is be the best person, be the best leader, grow into the best human I can be. And when you start to do these things, this self-improvement on the side, you guys, I promise you everything, everything starts to change. Your business starts to change. Um, okay. So that was it for the day. Who is, I know we are, man, we're getting, it's crazy. We're moving into the hundred days is almost over of hundred days to brave. Who's taking that from us this morning?
I've got it. And we're on day 89. Dang. Oh my God. Almost a hundred days we've been doing the morning show. That's so cool. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> All right. So day 89, where you meet with God, let the heavens rejoice. Let the earth be glad. Let the sea resound and all that is in it. Let the fields be jubilant and everything in them. Let all the trees of the forest sing for joy. That is Psalm 96, 11 through 12. One morning, my heart woke up before my mind did. And while my brain was like, sister, keep sleeping, my heart knew something was up. I've been me long enough to know when I'm supposed to listen to that little nudge. So I got up, laced up, walked to the water, and climbed Lifeguard Tower 52 on Newport Beach in Southern California. I asked God what was so important, assuming we, we must have something to discuss since I was clearly awake on purpose, and it was nothing. No agenda, no topic. It was just us, just sitting, just being, just together. I played some worship music, an album from Brian and Jen Johnson, and tears sprang my, to my eyes because after all these years together, it sure is sweet that sometimes the Lord wakes me up just to hang out. That morning I met with God in nature. His creativity in nature grows, something in me deep down in my soul. I looked out at the endless ocean he made just by speaking it into existence. And I remembered how much he loves me. His love makes me brave. And there is no place I love to meet with God more than sitting in his creation, sitting in nature. When I'm home, I often go to Radnor Lake. It's beautiful there. I just can't walk those trails without my heart worshiping. Spending time in God's creation, in his presence, will make you brave. You can be brave just because you're God's. Today, even if it's stepping outside of your office building and sitting under a tree, spend time in creation and remember how loved you are and how brave you can be. Today's task is Be Brave, purchased after all these years by Brian and Jen Johnson. You're going to love that album. Go outside, get in nature, and let the music play in your ears. Love it. And, you know, I just want to say one thing, you guys, you know that what did I learn today? How did I grow today? And what will I do differently? Listen, you guys, if you have felt stuck in your business and you know you're on all the Zooms and, and you're in the, you're doing what everything you know, you, you're having that hard talk look in the mirror and, and that talk with yourself and you know you truly are doing everything you could possibly be doing to grow your business, but it's just not moving in the right direction go to those three questions because I think it will be an eye opener because the missing piece with most people is the self-development piece. And once they start growing their, their mindset, it's amazing how things start to transform and transfer into your business and how everything changes. And it could truly be the missing piece. Um, okay. So who is on with us still that has never gotten a morning show gift from us before? Um, that was super quick. So Shelby R, Shelby, you are today's winner of our morning show gift. Um, and you uh, contact me or Brittany. Um, we'll give you a list of things to choose from and you can choose. Congratulations. Thanks for hanging out with me, guys. I'll see you guys uh, next Monday. I will be on and we'll talk more. We'll chat more. I'll have something up my sleeve. Love you guys. Have a good one. Happy Monday. Have a good week. Have a good end of month.